Hey, first of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah. God give me everything. Alhamdulillah. I know you got this. You don't like this. Alhamdulillah. First of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah. You know, Allah always have better plan than we have. And tomorrow, tomorrow God have plan. Inshallah, doesn't matter what's going to happen. I'm going to go keep forward, keep going and make history, Inshallah. Thank you so much. Nobody take this title before it's uh, with Muslim. Muslim have like more than a billion people, you know. When come Ramadan, this is everything for me. I don't think about fight because I believe in one God. Uh, this is my religion. Religion for me, number one. Sport is not for me, number one. For all the Khabib Nurmagomedov fans, this is a denizen of the Russian Republic of Dagestan. For all the MMA fans, he's an undefeated MMA fighter. And I'm going to go ahead and discuss some peculiar idiosyncrasies. You've seen him do it, some things he's done, some things he's said during some of his fights. So you can appreciate, I'm sure you will appreciate when you can connect it to something you're familiar with. The winner by submission, you know, Kamara, Habib, the Eagle, Nurmagomedov. Now let's start off with what he's doing here. This is not just particular to him. You'll see many people who want to keep it humble and who are thankful and grateful. They point up, pointing up to the one up above, up above the creation, up above the heavens and the universe, the one who created this whole universe, the galaxies, the seven seas, everything in this world. Isn't he not worthy of all praise and things? And that's what he's doing because people become very arrogant and this is something we have to be very very careful of and we can all take a lesson from this to keep it humble to keep it humble you cannot go wrong with keeping it humble arrogance will get you lost will lose you friends who likes to be around arrogant people and at the end failure failure at the end why is he putting his face on the ground what's he doing kissing the ground but let me connect it because the point was if i can if we can connect it to something that you are familiar with someone who you're per familiar with you're probably going to appreciate it a lot more you might even start doing it and if something works if it's gonna help improve your life why not give it a try and check this out you know Jesus. We know Jesus. Every, I mean, did you know Muslims love Jesus? There's this fighter here. If anyone knows who he is, he's wearing. A, he's he's another mixed martial arts fighter. He's got a he's got a shirt on, talking about how Muslims love Jesus. Did you know that? So if you're a Khabib, Khabib fan, you've learned something already. And you'll see that Muslims they have a deep reverence and love for Jesus as a mighty messenger who was sent. Just like Abraham, Noah, and all the other messengers, calling people to connect with the one who gave us these abilities, these gifts in life. Like Khabib was given, some very talented athlete, and, and, and he's acknowledging that this is from the Creator. And now, again, he's taking it a step further. And just like Jesus, and related to someone, you know Jesus, in the Gospel of Matthew 26, 39, it says that he went and he went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed to God. Isn't that amazing? This is something that Habib doing, not only him, but Muslims, 1.7 billion human beings. And Muslim is simply one who surrenders, who submits himself, not to a man, not to a woman, not to money, not to fame, not to anything or anyone, but to the Creator up above. Isn't that beautiful? If you learned something already, he's doing what all the prophets of God did. So it shouldn't be next time you see him do that, next time you're a fan of Khabib and you see you see him fighting at the end, and if he wins, God willing, and he prostrate, he puts his head on the floor, you can connect it. Now you watch this, you say, oh, he's doing what Jesus did. He's giving praise and thanks, keeping it humble. Excuse me, guys. Alhamdulillah. Now let's move on to the next thing. What he said. He says some, some words now. Sometimes when we hear something in another language, we can't appreciate it. Excuse me, guys. Alhamdulillah. I want to say something. He says, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. What does that mean? Why is he saying something in another language, in Arabic? Now, I want to connect this again back to the one I'm sure many Christians who love Jesus, people who aren't even maybe Christian, but they heard Jesus, they have they have a connection to him. 
Do you know that Jesus, he called on the Creator. If you ever watched the, the Passion of Christ. I'll take her long. Allah. In Arabic, it's just Allah. This is the Creator we're talking about. And He is saying, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Everything God gave me. So again, He's keeping it humble. If anything we could take away from this video is, is, is that quality of keeping it humble. We got too much. We're all susceptible to it. Ego. The ego can take over and you become very arrogant. Who likes to be around arrogant people? Keeping it humble. Again, he's saying, Alhamdulillah. It's just like saying, thank you, God. Everything God gave me. Very simple. Now, you can, can you appreciate that? Let's go on to the next thing. Allahu Akbar. And the last but not the least, Allahu Akbar. You hear him saying it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What does it mean? Is this some war cry? Jihad. They're coming to get us. How ridiculous is that sound? But that's what some people think. Do you know that over 60,000 books in a span of a hundred years have been written against Islam according to the Times Magazine article published in 1979, April 16th, I believe it was. And that the Islamophobia industry is a $250 million annual business. So you know, probably... The information you got, the book you read, false propaganda, fear mongering. And the hate mongers, they're making money, bashing, throwing dirt on Islam. So Allahu Akbar is not a war cry. It's simply Allah, God is greater, greater than that money, that dollar, that job, that woman, everything that you can imagine. God Almighty, the Creator, Allah is greater than this. And again, going back to Keeping it humble, always thanking the one who gave you the abilities to win that championship, to get up in the morning, to eat the wonderful food, to breathe this air. You don't got to go to Walmart to get it. It's free. So you say, God Almighty is great. It's like saying, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've heard that. Allahu Ah. Allahu Akbar. God Almighty is the greatest. So that's what Khabib is saying. I'll help you to familiarize yourself with some of the things that he does. What Muslims do in general, because Khabib is a Muslim, one who has consciously submitted to the creator of the heavens and the earth, and some of those stereotypes that one might have in the back of his head. He's heard this term, Allahu Akbar. Now, if you were to equate, because Islam is a beautiful way of life, calling you have peace, with the Creator, peace within yourself, so you can have that peace that money can't buy, and then you have peace with humanity. If you were to take all the ISIS and the Boko Haram and Al Qaeda, which, which didn't even exist a decade ago, it's because all of these wars is that hate, war, hate, violence, terrorism cycle that we gotta stop. Innocent blood here, there, everywhere is human life. We gotta condemn one. Condemn all. And when you have any large group of people, you're going to have radicals, you're going to have extremists. But we also have to see what's the root of all this. And Islam is not the root, my friends. No, Islam brings that peace and happiness into one's life. And when someone has peace and happiness, he's not trying to blow nobody up, especially himself or innocent people. But you have these things going on. But this is a geopolitical thing, and if you were to add up all of these groups, this is just a side note, I'm going off on a tangent, ISIS, Boko Haram, and all these groups I'm sure you've heard, and people out there associate, because some people are going to watch this video, they're going to think, you know, again, those, those, because of the effect of the Islamophobia machine. So take all these radical groups, compare that to the over 1.7 billion Muslims all over the globe. It would only equate to you have this small fringe element to the 1.7 billion last time I checked it was it'll be like 0.006% it's like taking the KKK Lords of Resistance Army or some of these these secular atheist groups PKK and all, all the Timo Tigers all of these 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 terrorist groups and now you try to pump them up put them up as if they're exemplary representatives of Christianity, 
of secularism, of atheism, whatever ism, that wouldn't be fair, that wouldn't be right. So you can't take a radical fringe element and try to pump them up as if they represent Islam. They don't. They don't represent Khabib. They don't represent me. They don't represent the over 1.7 billion Muslims who, again, are trying to keep it humble, keep it simple, live a peaceful life like everyone else, people who have connected with Muslims. John Dutcher will straight out tell you what he thought of Muslims. I actually hated Muslims. The women with their headdress on, you know, I just would sneer at them. Dutcher was surrounded by the people he loathed, but Muslims moving in moved him. It took this to, um, yeah, to, to wake me, you know, wake me up, yeah. A change of heart for the man who didn't realize he had such a big heart. You know, what struck me the most, honestly, was when I took a minute to actually talk to some of the Muslim people to find out, you know, they are just like me and I am uneducated on their religion. You know, I could easily make as many mistake judgment calls as any other person out there. Um, but when I took a second to sit down and listen to them and um, actually enter their mosque and go in and watch some of their prayers, it, it was a beautiful thing. And they answered some of my questions that I had. And uh, I just feel that maybe that that's something that they, they should do too for the people. A lot, of, a lot of us are uneducated, you know. Educate us on your religion. Let us know that not everybody's a bad, bad person. I said, I am very glad to see you here. Thank you for being here. This is America. And I just want to say as a Christian to all my Muslim brothers and sisters that we are glad to have you. We are, you are our neighbors. We stand with you. We will resist any attempts to hurt you. And please reach out to us. We will reach out to you. Thank you very much. Have made the human connection. They've seen past all the fear mongering and all the hype. And now that's it. We're going to curtail it. One more. I got a bonus for you. What's he doing in the back here? What's he doing in the back? Some people might see this picture and there's a there's a black house or cube. This is heavyweight champion of the world by way of Brooklyn. Part of the five pillars, Khabib, like many Muslims, make this journey once in a lifetime. If you're physically and financially able, it's the first house of worship. Get this built by Abraham to commemorate the worship of the one God. Remember, Islam is based on five pillars where anyone can be a Muslim. Habib Todd Berger came here from the U.S. Of Jewish ancestry, raised a Christian. He converted to Islam two years ago. All pilgrims here wear the simple white ihram and all markers of social status disappear. So my family has concerns and issues. Uh -huh. um, and they also recognize that I have a deep connection with God, with the one God. I believe that people have no idea what Islam is. Originally from Texas, Habib now lives in California. He says his biggest challenge is to change misconceptions in America about Islam. It's, it's unfortunate that the media in the States has portrayed Islam as it is um, because there's no connection between terrorism and Islam. As Arafat day draws to an end, many like Habib continue their prayers in the spot where Muslims say Prophet Muhammad delivered his last sermon. The other four pillars, if you didn't know, 
are to testify what's in your very nature. It's natural to believe in the Creator. They've done scientific studies of the God spot and all of us. At Oxford University, not too long ago, they did a study and they concluded that the belief in a Creator is intrinsic. It's innate. It's built in all of us. This belief is something acquired. So you do something that is natural, that's within your capability, that you give birth to what's already inside you, that there's nothing worthy of worship, nothing in the creation except the one who created the creation, the one God, the Creator. And Muhammad is the last and final messenger. This will automatically include, not exclude, every messenger that came before him with the same message. Submit your will to God Almighty Allah. That is the first pillar. Second is to establish the prayer five times a day minimum. Not because God needs it, because we need it. We need a recharge of the heart to keep it humble. Otherwise we get, we get taken away by this temporal world and we don't remember. We forget that this life is a test and we got to prepare ourselves for the day of judgment and we're going to be judged and evaluated. Just like in high school, college, there's an evaluation. This life is that. And those five pillars help us to remain cognizant of our purpose in life. And the third is giving in charity to the poor, zakat, fasting during the month of Ramadan. And this is something Jesus did. All the messengers of God did. They were all Muslims, ones who submit to the will of God. Khabib is a Muslim, one who submits to the God. You could be a Muslim. Anyone could be a Muslim anytime. This is what a Muslim is. And it was our humble attempt to familiarize you with some of the things that this MMA fighter does. So next time you see him, you watch him, you can appreciate them. It's not something, something that is foreign to you now, strange. We've connected it to things that you can relate to. And if you want to know more, call us 1-800-662-ISLAM and reach out, connect. Visit the Muslims. You know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I quoted you from Time Magazine, all of these these books that have been published, the, the industry of bashing Islam. But we need to connect as humans, connect as humanity, so we can work to make the world a better place. And we're not going to do it through fear and fear-mongering. We're not going to do it through this hate. Hate breeds hate. We need this is that 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 educational process that will help solve these problems. The human connection is another main factor. We're doing our small little part, and I hope that you can tune in with us every week to the Dean Show, where we help clear many of these misconceptions. And to our brother, Habib, God willing, this gets to him. We can like to have you've been on this show, that show, Ariel Hawani show. You can make it, inshallah, with your brother on the Dean Show. I have my people reach out to your people and inshallah, God willing, we can make the connections and we can get to meet and have you on the program. Thank you very much. Everybody tuning in. We'll see you next time. Same time, same channel here on the Dean Show. Like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.